Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Something very different today. I'm going away this week for four or five days. Really need some time off. So I figured I would put the call out for questions and do a little Q&A session to help sort of tide you guys over until I'm back. Maybe we'll have another video as well. It depends how much time I get. But I thought this would be fun. It's something I've done in the past and I really love these opportunities to connect with the community. So if this is something that you would like to see again, Maybe let me know and I'd be happy to do another one. I am just literally going to be scrolling through, reading these questions and giving my thoughts. So you might want to do something else, play a game, do whatever. There's not going to be a whole lot interesting on screen. And as I uh, mentioned in this above post, the questions will be about everything from, you know, lore related things like a traditional hashtag askek to things about the channel. Whatever you want, I will at least consider answering. And I'm going to try to go for... A while at least maybe 20 minutes maybe a bit longer who knows we'll see what the questions are like so the first one comes from bman 99 he says hey Eck, my question is will you ever go back to the versus series i always watch your old starship versus videos and they are always a treat so this is a really good question definitely one that i get the most um i've got my reasons for doing verses and why i sometimes don't do them as much I don't necessarily like comparing different universes like Halo or Star Wars that are so fundamentally different because they just work in different ways. Like Halo has, you know, less attachment to reality or sorry, more attachment to reality than something like Star Wars. But Halo is less realistic than, you know, a hard sci-fi um, universe. So it's sometimes hard to make those comparisons, especially where Star Wars, for example, is a very heavily stylized franchise where the fights are happening you know right next to the ships are right next to each other shooting lasers where halo the ships are you know 10 kilometers away so it's hard to make that comparison and another thing that i found is that i end up making a lot of people really unhappy i'm the kind of person who as much as i try to not let negative feedback get to me it definitely does and although so many of you do love these series a lot of you also just did not respond well if you're not if you're watching this video you're probably not one of those people but there were a lot of people who got very very angry about the starship versus videos especially the cross universe ones people always thought that i was biased towards star wars or biased towards halo both simultaneously um but it is something that i'm going to do more in the future i don't think i'll ever go back to it being kind of a thing that i do two to three times a week or more frequently um but i do want to continue working them in and I think the Starship versus for Star Wars specifically, that's something that will always be a part of my channel. But uh, thank you so much for asking, B-Man. Next up, we have Wesley. If you could be in involved in the production of a live-action Star Wars show, what era would you want it to be focused on, and what role would you want slash feel more confident in in this production? I honestly don't think I would have a lot to contribute. <laughs> as funny as that sounds. Maybe it's not funny. Like... I'm sure a lot of you are reading this question and are thinking, well, you'd think Eck would be good as, you know, sort of a lore consultant in like a Pablo Hidalgo role, but for Star Wars canon, you know, probably not. And I don't really have that memory where like I can instantly be like, oh, you can't do that because comic book XYZ from whatever year did that. Um, I, I think I'd like to be involved kind of in the, the general writing process and talking about whether something matches kind of what I believe to be the themes and the central kind of tenets of Star Wars. I think I'd also like to do things with the set. One of my favorite things about Star Wars has, also, has always been the fact that it's sort of a lived-in universe. Um, and yeah, that's really fun. And I would like to do what I can to, you know, make fun little details. If, if I could just talk to all the actors and help them come up with fun little backstories, maybe that would be cool as well. Um, stuff that no one would ever actually see. Um, next is from, thank you, Wesley, for that question. Next is from SJ. He says, Hey, Ak, my question is, what are the principles of starship design for fighters, and how could you create effective starship while retaining the Star Wars feel? So, Star Wars is a series where, uh, honestly, it, it, it's what I would call the eye test. Does something match the Star Wars eye test? Like, the Imperial Star Destroyer is designed to have kind of, I mean, it's, I think probably originally designed to look like, you know, a naval vessel with the big communications towers and whatever else. But 
kind of afterwards they talk about how it was designed with all these inefficiencies and it's a ship that has a million and one weaknesses um but it's it's also hard because star wars is a universe where there are all these rules that don't make any sense really when it comes to kind of what it would be really like to fight in a three-dimensional space so that's kind of a hard question to to ask but you know in star wars i think kind of like you mentioned in this comment one of the things that pilots seem to rely a lot on is actually looking out the window, which again, probably wouldn't happen in a real space battle because space is very big and ships are very small, but that's something that happens a lot. So you'd want an open window. Um, you'd probably want a ship that's very maneuverable, obviously. Um, the X-Wing to me is kind of held up as the perfect starfighter generally. So yeah, sorry that's not a great answer to your question. I have talked about kind of my principles of starship design in a future, sorry, in a past video, I don't really want to retread topics too, too much, so I'll just kind of reference you to that. Okay, um, Elvis is asking a question about Kenobi. I'm going to try to avoid Kenobi spoilers, I think. Um, he's asking, do you think we'll get a live-action Vader-focused series, or even a standalone movie? I don't think there's any chance we get a standalone movie, just because Vader was such a prominent part of the original trilogy. Um, like, he is the main antagonist, and presumably that would kind of be his role in the show. Like, I, I don't think you have a show where Vader's the hero. Um, although I guess you could have him off doing something Sith-related, and kind of more of the show from his perspective, protagonist in that way. But I don't, I don't think that's likely either. I just, I think, I think vader's got a lot of screen time and i think he's a character where he's used very effectively well he's best when he's used effectively in a limited role like in rogue one or even in a new hope he's only in that movie for like 10 minutes so i don't think so uh i would definitely watch it though but he's you know got lots of coverage in comics and novels and video games so i think he's probably okay um so this one is from uscc who says do you find youtube to be a sustainable career i've been watching your channel for a long time and i have to ask what are your plans for after youtube or are you planning on doing this as long as possible uh and there, this is an interesting question because there are a lot of misconceptions about being on youtube um for one thing this comment says i wouldn't even call it near sustainable with this amount with the amount of subs he has that's a comment i don't really get because I think I've got a lot of subscribers, 900,000, um, but I've actually been full-time since 2017. Uh, as this comment kind of re uh, correctly recognizes, I did work as, uh, I was a lawyer for a few months, um, and I was an articling student before that, which is what you do in Canada after you graduate law school. My contract, I chose not to renew it because I wanted to move. And I had kind of a natural period between jobs. I started YouTube in 2017 at sort of when there was three months left in my contract. The story behind that, I guess this is as good a place to tell it as any, is I was working in Toronto. Uh, I was working an amazing job, but I really missed where I live now and where I came from. And I was living with my then girlfriend, now wife, and we kind of knew that we wanted to move back. So she, she was a nurse at the time, she still is a nurse. Um, she decided to take a job back here in Halifax and I decided that because I had so much time in Toronto and I was like Toronto poor, like I was earning good money, but Toronto was a very, very expensive city to live in, especially where I was like right downtown, which is not an experience I would change, but it was expensive. So I wasn't going out very much. I didn't have very many friends because I'd only been there for, you know, eight months or whatever. Uh, and I was working so much. So I decided to just start the YouTube channel, and by the time I moved back home in 2017, before The Last Jedi came out, it was doing well enough that, yeah, at that point, I was I decided to give it a shot. And my, my wife, again, then girlfriend, was very, very supportive. And that was back when I had, you know, one twentieth of the subscriber base I had now. I think I had about 50,000 subscribers by the time I went full-time. Um, subscribers mean very, very little on YouTube. It's all about the views you get. Um, so yeah, I went full time in 2017. I remember I hit a hundred thousand subscribers in December of that year when the last Jedi came out and then 150 in like January. So it moved pr very quickly from there. And YouTube is very, very, very sustainable at the level that I'm at right now. I 
I make a good living doing what I do, and I'm very lucky to do so, and I'm very smart in, with my money. I have very, very little... I would say I've got no frivolous expenses. I'm in a house that, you know... I Like, I, when I get a car, I pay it off, you know, right away. When I'm in a house, I, you know, manage my money wisely, make good mortgage payments. I don't buy a house that's too expensive for me or my family. Um... So yeah, YouTube is my only job. I do have other channels as well. You've probably seen my X Clips channel, which that, you know, that earns good money. I've done other things. So yeah, YouTube is way past the point of sustainability for me. And uh, what am I going to do afterwards? I'm hoping that if I work hard enough now and invest my money properly, that I don't have to return to being a lawyer, although that wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but doing something kind of related to what I was doing, if my YouTube channel died would be, you know, preferable, but hopefully it goes on for at least another 10 years or five years and I can make enough money and kind of, you know, live frugally or whatever else to, to not have to go back to working. Like I love working for myself. So that would be the kind of the, the goal moving forward. Okay. That was a long answer. Cause I guess I like talking about myself time brain as I guess I've got two questions. Would you be open to having official star Wars AU? I guess that means alternate universes. Like, what if Luke did join the Empire, or what if Palpatine... Okay, I get what he's asking. He's basically saying, would you be cool with what ifs? And yes, I am not someone who cares a lot about canon if stories can be good. Which, I know that's kind of weird coming from me, where, like, I talk about lore all the time. Um, but, like, I was a big fan of Star Wars Visions. So, yeah. I, I, I'm totally cool with with uh, n different approaches, non can approaches. Uh, like, I think that the MCU's What If series was very cool, so more of that. Oops. Just clicked on his YouTube channel. Let me just go back. Uh, okay. So next is Ash. She says, hey, what do you think the overall plan that Bale, Obon, and Yoda made for Luke and Leia? Um... Yeah, I, I honestly think that the plan, and, and he kind of mentions that there seems to be a bit of incongruity. Discongruity? Is that a word? I don't know. There seems to be a bit of a mix-up, I guess, um, between what everyone had planned. And yeah, I it, I think that the Revenge of the Sith novel kind of handles that fairly well. Uh, and I, I think Dark Lord Rise of Darth Vader covers a bit more of that as well. And to me, I think the number one thing was getting the kids safe. And I do think that there always was some plan and that Bale always did have some plan to have, you know, Leia actively resist the Empire, although he was giving her more training in uh, in terms of being a politician and like a political force. Other than that, though, yeah, I don't I don't really know. I, that's a good question. I don't know. Crystal says, hey, I've always been curious as to what the function of fixed wings are on starfighters and Usually, I think there are a couple of rationale given. The obvious reason is that they look cool and that they're meant to look like fighter planes. I think, for one, some ships are meant to also work in atmosphere, although correctly points out they don't have flaps. Um, and they do usually use repulsor lift technology anyway. I'm guessing that the... I, I think a lot of the times the rationale is that they are for letting... To, for one, to keep the guns, which expel a lot of heat away from the main body. Sometimes the uh, wings themselves radiate heat. I, I think that might be the one of the X-Wing's purposes or for stability of the weapon or something. And on the TIE, I believe it. there's a secondary purpose or maybe even a primary purpose where they, they use it as an energy source. So... Spiffy says... Spiffy, sorry. Would you rather Disney try to bring Legends into their canon? No, I'm not. I don't think you can force that. Uh, I think you allow both to continue separately. Um, I don't see why at this point, maybe at least in five years, like they should start trickling new Legends material, I think. Um, uh, Sword Saber with a very nice comment. Thank you. Oh, this is a good one. A very good one by Smog. What is your favorite piece of Star Wars music? I actually have a few that really stand out to me. I love Victory Celebration from the end of Return of the Jedi. Uh, so much better than Yub Nub. Some people find that controversial. I, I don't see how. For me, that's like... Yub Nub is just a really disappointing way to end the series where Victory Celebration is so good. Um, so yeah, that would probably be one of my favorites. I really like the Rebel Fleet theme um, from the end. 
of episode five, kind of the the music that plays as they're looking out the uh, the sh- the Nebulon B and the fleet flies away, and then it goes nicely into the the credit music. I like what else do I like? I, I really the OT stands out for me in terms of music. Um, although Duel of Fates, of course, is a banger. Hmm. I really like Han and the Princess. There's like a little version of Han and the Princess on Endor that is one of my favorites. And the asteroid chase, just because it's so exhilarating. Um, yeah. Uh, Hulk says, what would your dream Star Wars project be, given that it would be a success with no chance of disappointments? Rogue Squadron, for sure. Something focused on space battles, the space terms that I've loved for so long. Rogue Squadron, for sure. Simple. Great question. That's my simple answer. The Rogue Squadron movie. Um, Koya says, this is an interesting question, and I'm going to try to answer without spoilers. Do you feel like Kenobi delivered in terms of synthesizing the prequel trilogy with the Clone Wars TV show? No, not really. Now that I think about it, I don't think it did a good job of that. Um, like, th- there would have been room for, you know, to bring in Ahsoka in or other things that they could have done. They didn't. This was definitely felt to me like a bridge between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. So, no, I don't think it did a good job of that. I'm going to keep it simple and just say no. Uh, my question is, uh, Fallout says, the Universal Union from the Half-Life universe were to come across the Covenant from Halo. Um, I mean, in... In Half-Life, the um, the Combine, I assume the Combine is a part of the Universal Union. I haven't played through all of Half-Life Alex yet. I, I think that's the kind of the, the big empire the Combine's a part of. If not, I'm going to answer your question incorrectly. But if that's the case, they're just on a completely another level where they're like trans-dimensional and whatnot. So. Oh, this is a good one from Wolfario. Hi, Ek. My question would be, have you experienced burnout with your videos in the past? And if so, how do you usually move forward? Yes. I work a lot, and it's kind of a weird thing where I work in a space that I love. Like, I love Star Wars, obviously. Uh, But yeah, I do get a lot of burnout, and I don't... Like, in the course of a week, I don't usually take days off. Um, And I have kids, so I'm kind of always working in some way. And the way that I move past that is honestly by being having periods where I grind like right now I'm working really hard on my shorts channel and it's new and I'm seeing success so the work comes easy but sometimes it doesn't and I think what the best thing to do in that case is just be patient with yourself and I kind of just accept that okay this week I'm probably going to spend a night where I'm supposed to be working and I technically am but I spend most of my time watching a movie on my second screen or I'm taking video game breaks, or watching a movie with my wife, or whatever. Like, I just, I try to be patient with myself, and yeah, that would be my suggestion. It's it's hard, though. I, I do think, one thing that I did, too, and this is something I've heard from a lot of YouTubers, when you start out, there's a real kind of threat that you get addicted to the numbers, and having a really good video can really improve your spirits, and a bad one can do the opposite. Try not to look at the the stats too much, especially where sometimes videos do really well when you're not expecting them to, at, like later. So, yeah. Uh, Aaron says, I believe Aaron sent this question on TapCalf, and I think we're going to answer it, but... I mean, there was a Vader... He's asking about a Vader video game, and I mean, there was a Vader Immortal. I guess you're not controlling Vader in that one, though. I haven't played it, but I'm pretty sure you're controlling someone else, so... Yeah, Vader would be cool, especially where he is so slow. Uh, So, Guy asks kind of about a Thrawn general now. So, I think that's kind of outside the scope of this Q&A. But if you look up Eckhart's Ladder Thrawn, I have done a full, a few, I would say pretty comprehensive um, breakdowns. The only way you can really beat Thrawn in space combat is by introducing something that he has no way to predict, which is much easier said than done, and not really something you can plan, because if you can plan it, he'll probably anticipate it. Um, I think in Legends, like, the Nogri are probably his biggest actual mistake, where he fails to, you know, consider how he's screwing them over and how that will play against you. Uh, in Canon, he's definitely kind of weak to the political nuance, but... 
How do you feel about future Star Wars projects given the ones we've seen so far? This is from uh, Cyro, Cairo, um, uh, sorry, I guess like Cairo, yeah, anyway. Um, Cryo? No, that's C-R-Y. I don't know. Visions, Kenobi, Bad Batch, and Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, I mean, if, if The Mandalorian had been the only Star Wars show that had come out, I'd feel feel a little more positive. But I actually quite liked The Bad Batch. I, I really liked The Bad Batch, actually. I quite liked Book of Boba Fett, and I quite liked Kenobi as well. And I really liked Visions. Um, so I, I'm still at the point where I'm feeling pretty positive about Disney Plus content. But I will say, Kenobi, um, Kenobi did make me a little worried about kind of the future of uh just like if they're doing too many projects is the actual production quality going to suffer um let's see so jedi's is kind of bait but i'll address it anyway he says hey Eck, do you think star wars youtubers should share their emotions like crying over a returning character or is it rather a part of the show to make more views and drama? Thank you in advance. For one, I don't think there's anybody that I've seen reacting to Star Wars stuff who's faking their emotions. I'm, I'm sure they exist, but like this is in reference to Star Wars theory crying when Luke Skywalker showed up. And I cried too when Luke Skywalker showed up. I just wasn't like, I wasn't doing live reactions at that point. But had I been doing live reactions like I did to the book of Boa Fett... I would have been the exact same. I was a mess. Luke Skywalker was my hero as a, as a kid. Um, so yeah, I totally think that Star Wars YouTubers should share their emotions 100%. Um, especially now where like there's lots of negativity. Um, and it's, you get, in my opinion, you get more push in my experience, rather than not my opinion, you get more pushback from being positive than being negative. Um, so if you want to be positive about something, honestly, more power to you. Uh, just some randomness asks a uh, Thrawn's Revenge question, uh, which is a mod for Empire War, asking if I'm going to play one of these factions. And traditionally, I only play the New Republic or the Empire in Thrawn's Revenge. I have done, I think, a Pentastar playthrough in the in the ba in, back in the day. The reason I do Thrawn's Revenge or I do the New Republic or the Empire is because they get new ships as the campaign progresses, and otherwise, I just get bored. Okay. Um. This is a very interesting one. Uh, how do you keep coming up with new or somewhat new lore topic ideas? Yes, Star Wars is massive and highly detailed, but there's also a lot of Star Wars lore channels out there. There are a lot of Star Wars lore channels out there. There are a lot of very good ones. Um, the way that I keep coming up with new ideas is I just keep reading. I like If I read a Star Wars book, there are 30 ideas that come to my head. Um, and usually, you know, when you get an idea from a book, it's not just you know, regurgitating that line. It's taking that line as a prompt for more research, for other things. And Star Wars canon and the comics have been covered really in depth, but there's really no super big Legends YouTubers. Like, if you Google, if you search on YouTube, Garmbel Iblis, like, let's just, let's just try right now. One of the most important characters from Star Wars Legends. Garmbel Iblis lore. The it's it's Corey, my friend Corey, who runs my podcast with me, has the as the only video there, and it's only got ten thousand views. Like the Yuzhan Vong War has hardly been covered. Um, the Fate of the Jedi series, there have been lots of videos on Abeloth because she's a very clickable kind of entity. But like, I don't many people who are making those videos have have read them. No offense to them whatsoever. Uh, so there's still a ton of room. I'm nowhere near running out of content, especially now. It's nice having the TV shows to throw in to do a mix kind of of covering modern things and also going back and covering things from Legends. But you would be surprised, like, I read a lot of Star Wars Legends and not to kind of toot my own horn, because I'm not that's not what I'm trying to do at all. Um, I am one of the only big YouTubers covering, like, you know, let's just another example. Um... Let's look up Crystal Star and see what comes up. Yeah, like there's the anti-force from that, like, you know. So there's there, there's a lot more room. And if you want to start a YouTube channel, I encourage you to do it as well. But yeah, thank you for the question, Jedi Sentinel. You have, I'm kind of wondering. Okay, uh, so. Go back. I was kind of wondering based on that name whether 
you had a YouTube channel. Star Wars Squadron gameplay, though, that's cool. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, next is Kermit. It says, I'm wondering if you talk about the class of Yuzhan Vong ships. This is not something I want to get into in this video, but in the New Jedi Order, they talk about them often in reference to New Republic ships. So there's like Dreadnought Yuzhan Vong ships, uh, Star Destroyer Yuzhan Vong ships, or Cruisers, or Starfighters, and they're kind of in that, or they'll just call it like a Yuzhan Vong frigate, for example. Um... And yeah, they're grown. They're made out of organic technology. They use Dovin basils are the kind of shielding that they have. They're basically miniature black holes, and they usually shoot basically magma, liquid hot magma. Austin Powers thing. Um, and they're pretty deadly, especially when they're uh, being bolstered by a war coordinator. Uh, this is an interesting one. Why did they stop making clones after Fett died? So in Legends, they didn't, and there were other clone templates. Suntir Fell, for example, was cloned. Um, and Thrawn, after he found the Sparty cloning cylinders, he he would basically just identify good Imperials and clone them. Uh, the reason the Empire in canon didn't do it, and I think this makes sense, is why it, like, for one, there was the threat of a clone rebellion, as we're seeing in the Bad Batch. But two, um, why not pull people from the planets that you've conquered. Like, the Empire has no shortage of population. The soldiers aren't going to be as quite a high quality, but you're getting planets invested in the war when their sons and daughters are being taken and, you know, put into action. Or not even the war for most of the time. That's also the other thing. There's no formal war until the Rebellion shows up, which is really only at the tail end of the Empire's history. Um, but yeah. How would you react if in a decade two the saga were being remade? Not into it. Just straight up not into it. Um, especially the original trilogy. You're not going to recapture the heart that the movies have. Um, would you remake, reimagine the Old Republic era stories to fit into canon? Yes. If I were to go back, though, and do the Old Republic, there, things have got to change. I like the Old Republic and the Old Republic 2. Knights of the Old Republic, I should say. I like those stories. But there's too much of the same around them. It's too much, oh, Sith Lord... A dies and B shows up and then it's the Sith Empire and then it's the new Sith Empire and then the new new Sith Empire like you need to use the Sith sparingly or they become a lot less interesting and that's what happened in Legends in my opinion uh Super Fry hey I cuss the YouTube channel YouTube and gaming going going I know last year at Star Wars right you're having some doubts about the sustainability of your channel and you notice the X clips really been taking off I personally was never worried about the sustainability of, of this channel I was a bit worried about my gaming channel, X2, kind of falling off. Um, I think, like, having any worries would m more be about not enjoying it and, like, maybe what things would look like in five to ten years. But right now, things are going amazingly well. Um, the X Clips channel, which, yeah, we, we did start that kind of... I started it off as shorts and I transitioned it now into just short content. Really um, super kind of condensed, I think, high-quality uh content that's very clickable um that's doing super super well and it's i've hired charlie's doing that we're splitting it 50 50 you know it's, it's been great so okay uh john says curious if you've ever been interested in looking in the historical inspiration of star wars vehicles and delving into long history of pulling weapons and vehicles from world war ii Definitely. The only problem is I'm not super knowledgeable about World War II. Uh, E.C. Henry is definitely good for that, but that's one thing that I kind of do want to move away from, and I have moved away from a bit, is the idea of daily uploads. I do still upload a lot, but I would maybe like to upload a bit less and focus on longer projects, and we've got some stuff in the works that with a couple other YouTubers for maybe a longer uh, ch a channel where we contribute very high quality, very long like think an hour or more uh, kind of essays that are super highly edited, like one video a month, but it's a banger. Um, so that's something that we're considering, and that's the kind of, I think, video. The one that I'm working on is more about kind of law and politics and international law and Star Wars, uh, but that's the kind of thing that could fit in well there as well, I think. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Why aren't drone fighters more common? Uh, Eddie Edo asks, and... There's contradictions in this. Um, some sources say that just robot-controlled starfighters aren't as good. We get that in Children of the Jedi, for example, where Luke is easily able to avoid one of the robot turrets. Uh, but in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, the tri-droids are, like, very, very good, and Obi-Wan just barely survives them. 
one of the rationales, it, I, I kind of prefer that there's something an organic pilot brings, whether it's the creativity or the reaction or the communication that droids just can't. Um, Will says, have you ever considered the lore of Destiny? I've covered the lore of Destiny. I have in one video. Um, I don't know if it was a great video. I tried really hard on it. My problem is, if I'm going to cover, and I'm going to answer this just generally, if I'm going to cover a universe, I don't want it to be me just reading the Wikipedia page. Um, like, if you can do that yourself, if that's all that I'm adding, not really interested. And when I started out on YouTube, I definitely, there were videos where it's like, I'm relying, I'm talking about a topic that I think will do well as a video, but I don't know a lot about it. And it's, let's be honest, it's a lot of the Wikipedia page or the, you know, if it's a different universe, whatever page. Um, but now, like, I don't really enjoy doing that and I don't have to do that and I shouldn't do that. It's not the kind of content I want to make. Um, so, yeah. Like, if I'm going to cover the Battlestar Galactica in a Versus video now, I want to watch the whole series so I don't screw up. Or at least do a lot of research and watch the key scenes. I mean, I've watched the show before, but I'd want to watch it again. And sometimes it's not sustainable for a video that, you know, it's where I upload so frequently. So, like, Destiny, if I want to do a... De like, Destiny has a very, very, very kind of... From what I understand, anyway, there's a lot of lore. The same thing with Elden Ring. I made one Elden Ring lore video. It did super well. I think it hit, like, four or 500,000 views. Um, but now I'm just... I haven't been playing the game... That was when I was playing the game nonstop, and I was only really talking about one very niche topic. And I'm sure I still got things wrong. Now, if I wanted to jump in, I'm going against people who have, you know, a thousand hours in the game... And there's just not a lot that I'm going to contribute that you can't get somewhere else. Most powerful Sith in Star Wars history? I I don't know. I, wh whoever the writer wants it to be. Um, Palpatine, I guess. Some, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, Nick asked about writing. I don't know a whole lot about writing. Just make what you'd want to read. Oh, this is an interesting one. If you could be in charge of one part of Lucasfilm, animation, TV, film, or book, which would you choose? I would not want to be in charge of anything. Um, if I had to choose one, though, it would be video games. I know that's not on the list, but I think video games has the real potential for interesting storytelling that's not quite being met. What do you think will happen to Grogu? I've got no clue about Grogu. <laughs> Uh, would you consider talking about Local 58? I actually have done a video on Local 58. Um, let me just see if I can find it. I'm sure if you, I'm sure if you search Local 58 Eckhart's Ladder. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, did a, I did a video on Local 58. It actually did pretty well. I did another one on that you might enjoy on the back rooms. Th that was actually one of my favorite videos that I've done recently. Uh, if you look up the back rooms, explain liminal spaces and the places beyond. Kind of a cool title. I talked about the back rooms, but not in like a kind of a, not keeping it in a box. Like I wanted to talk about what liminality meant and what it feels like, and then talk about how it applies not to the mythos of the back rooms as some Wikipedia article will try to, you know, fan wiki article will try to make it, but has it made sense to me? So that's a great question. I love analog horror. I, Gemini, I think I've looked into, but it was pretty well covered. Not familiar with the monument mythos though, so I'll check that out. But I, I really love the kind of there are many different ways of telling of storytelling, especially in the horror genre. Uh, there's one that I wanna I really want to do some research on and maybe cover. It's about like a wildlife park or it, it's a national park that's discovered to be a living creature. Uh, yeah. A great question though. Uh, Lidl says, "Am I gonna end up?" Getting everyone? No, there's probably... How many questions are there? 225. No, I won't be able to get all of them. Uh, if you never found interest in Star Wars Taylor, what would your trailer channel be about? Couple things. I, I think there's three options. Hockey. I'm a huge hockey fan. I've done a few hockey videos on my X channel, and there's actually a lot of interest. And hockey is a space... Hockey is going to blow up in the next 10 years. I swear. And there are not that many content creators. And the, the really big content creators that try, they make it their full-time job. My problem is I never played hockey. Um, Dad said I was scared to get hit when I was like... Part of the problem with hockey is you've got to start when you're like three years old or five years old. I guess I was scared. I wasn't a great skater. So, hockey, 
Um, gaming generally, uh, but specifically, I was really big into SimCity or city planning architecture, or I guess the fourth thing would be law, since I was a lawyer. Republic interdictorships. Don't know enough about, don't know much about that. I'm just going to kind of probably at this point scan for some interesting ones. Kind of answered this one. The Jedi, I don't know why the Jedi know about the Rule of Two. That is a weird thing, but they definitely know it somehow. Oh, it's from the Bane book, actually. I think one Jedi survives. I think it's from the Bane book. Uh, have I ever watched similar versus content from Genisari or Evanova? Yeah, they do like really long breakdowns. Definitely familiar with them. Mm, let's see. What is your favorite Star Wars era? I really like the original trilogy. That's those are my favorite movies, and I like a lot the new Jedi, the new Republic era from Legends. So kind of up to the Yuuzhan Vong War. I like the Vong War too, but I'm very kind of I got a lot of nostalgia about like the Bantam era. Are there any other franchises you might consider branching out on doing videos on? I remember one that made a poll that included talking about the Gears of War universe. Yeah, I was really going to... I was really kind of planning to do a video on Emergence Day from Gears of War. Um, but it's at, that was when I was... That was a long... That was probably five years ago at this point. Probably 2017. And now, for one, a couple of games have come out. And I'm sure that's changed the lore. But I'd also want to go back and play the original trilogy again. But a great question. And someone else mentioned Starfield. I'll definitely look at Starfield. I'll probably make at least one video on it. I always am looking for something that I can really sink my teeth into and start making content regularly on. Um, yeah. USSC, does, does, all, does, does all the lore you present come from the fandom wikis? No. And I do think you can tell when a YouTuber, and like I said, have I done this in the past? Yes, I've. but you can tell when a YouTuber is relying too much. Oh, there's a new Backrooms video. I just looked over. Kane Pixels just released a new one. Anyway, yes, you can tell when YouTubers rely too much on wikis, 100%. Part of the problem with the Star Wars wiki is it's so good that, for one, yes, if I'm doing a video on a unique topic and I want to see what books they it appeared in in case I missed any, of course I'll check the wiki, and I'll pretty much check it at least once for every video. But part of the problem is I will be reading something like, I'll be reading something from the new Essential Guide to Warfare from a specific book, and I'll write it down to include it in the video, and then I'll be reviewing the wiki before I record, and I'll see that they also excerpted that one quote as well, and I'll be like, damn, they're so good, because it'll be frustrating, because it makes me look like I'm just, you know, wiki reading, which is something that I don't do, and, you know, it makes you feel, it may, for nerd credibility, it's not good. Um... Any type laws besides Vader survive the Battle of Yavin? I, there was one from Star Wars. Well, there's either one or two, depending on whether you believe the retcon or not, in Star Wars that crashed on Yavin. What's his name? Is it Streed? Yavin Tie Pilot. He's in the Young Jedi Knight series. Oh no, Quarrel. Why did I say Streed? Um. Oh no, wait, was he the one from... Yeah, he was the one from Young Jedi Knights. Uh, yeah, Quarrel. Um, and he was retconned into also being one that appeared in the... I, I think Marvel Comics as well. Um, but yeah, speaking of much, much lesser known lore, there's a ton of lesser known lore. It's really been only touching the surface. There have been so many Star Wars books. Hundreds from Legends and then comics. Like, there's entire comics... 100 plus issue comics like Rogue Squadron that YouTubers haven't even touched yet. There's really an opportunity to eke out a little nice YouTube career, I think. And yeah, I, I try to get to it as much as possible. Part of it is like, I have a podcast called Tap Cap Transmissions where I go through and I reread things. And that ends up kind of being a natural kind of course of how I research. It's kind of scrolling through now. Will you continue the Pentastar alignment playthrough that I started? No, that would be gone by now. <laughs> What would be the Wookiee's home planet? How do you pronounce it? That's Kashyyyk, with three Ys. 
Could Batman with prep time destroy the Death Star all by himself? See, this is one of the funny... Justin's kind of referring to the fact that on versus battles or battle wikis or Reddit, like, one one kind of... Part of the problem with doing these versus videos is that you can choose whoever you want to win. And Batman's the best example of that because you put Batman against Superman and if he's got prep time, he brings Kryptonite. If you put Batman against the Death Star, he brings the anti-Death Star kit with him and a Stormtrooper Mirage outfit and stuff. Um, so yeah. Are you planning on making a Battle of the Dreadnought sequel? I want to so badly. Part of the issue is EC Henry is incredibly talented, very busy with his own things. And, and yeah, that's honestly the main thing. But maybe at some point we'll find another animator. Uh, again, not because I want to move away from him, just because like, he's working on a Star Trek fan film right now that is very, very high quality. So... Do you think Halo Legends and Star Wars Visions represent the correct directions each franchise should go? Halo Legends is far more quality than the Halo show we got. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I like that. That shouldn't be the main content, but I just think there's so much room for creativity. And if you limit yourself to what's canon, you're doing the franchise a disservice. There are so many cool Star Wars stories that you can tell. I think the best example of this is the Ronin. Not only the short film The Duel, which was in Visions, but the the book that came out subsequently, Ronin, is actually one of my favorite. I almost called it a new canon book, but it's not really. Um, so, yeah. Do you have a favorite lightsaber? I'm very simple when it comes to lightsaber. I like the blue. I like I really like Anakin slash Luke slash Mara Jade slash Rey's lightsaber. Um, it's probably my favorite, to be honest. Hey, Ek, do you enjoy anything about the sequel trilogy? Yeah, yeah, of course I do. Uh, my main problem with the sequel trilogy is plot. I don't like what happened specifically, especially in episode 9. Uh, and episode 8 specifically is, is where they really lost me on plot. But I quite like The Force Awakens. Um, I saw that movie like five times in theaters. I felt very positive about it. For me, I'm a very... Uh, I'm a very emotional watcher so something you know hits just right even if there are issues you know i'm usually willing to look past that a bit and but with the last jedi i just really dislike so much of the plot but the themes in that movie for one it's a beautiful movie visually i think even the haters or the people who don't like the movie um and i'm called a hater sometimes too would recognize that but i like the themes i love the scene with yoda like as a dad a lot of that hits really close to home like we like, we are what they grow beyond. Like, that's perfect. Um, some of it's done right, some of it's not, but yeah. Three Minute Hero asks, all interest in Squadrons evaporated, not just with you, but the wider gaming space. I mean, Squadrons is definitely, yeah, it's not a premier gaming experience right now. I mean, the experience is still great. It's a phenomenal game. The problem was, it was never envisioned as anything but what we got. That's a double A kind of limited experience with not a whole lot. And, and, uh, you know, in content, like just being honest, I don't think they gave enough credit to how good Squadrons was. It's probably my favorite game of all time. Um, the mechanics are just phenomenal, and I don't think they even anticipated the size of the community that popped up. Like Twin Sun Squadron, that was a twenty thousand dollar tournament that I threw. I would love nothing more than to do another. There's just not enough interest, unfortunately. But it was that was probably one of my favorite things that I've been a part of as a YouTuber. Even though we had some technical issues the first space. First day, sorry, which was very, very stressful. Um, but yeah, it's not Squadron's fault. It's not even, it's not even, you know, it's certainly not Moda's fault. It's just the game was envisioned as a limited, no microtransaction, no live service game. And in 2022 slash 2021, those are going to have a shelf life. So. Um, oh, my friend Kevin. It says, is there any info about more Star Wars movies anytime in the near future? Are these shows really meant to set up the future of the franchise? I think they realize that for Star Wars movies to really hit their full potential, there needs to be, you know, that sense of want. Like, there needs to be the time between movies and that each movie needs to be a spectacle. So I think shows have kind of stepped in as the thing that keeps, for one, Disney getting our money, but also Star Wars interest high, and then the movies are going to be as they should be i hope these big blockbuster events i think solo was a mistake just straight up i think solo was a mistake um it would have been good as a tv show but i think it devalued kind of star wars movies and 
I think the next movie we're supposed to get, there's Taito Waititi's movie, which I think that deserves to be a movie if, if he's going to pull off whatever he wants to pull off. And then Rogue Squadron is kind of the other one. I believe Rogue Squadron is supposed to be the next one. Um, but yeah. All right, let's just pick two. Let's just pick two or three more. What's the best way to cook a steak? I am. I go very rare. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best way. I think medium rare is the one that most people honestly. If you if you have ten people at a dinner table and you want to please as many of them as you can, you probably just go medium because people who like the steak rare aren't going to be disgusted by a medium steak. They might not enjoy it as much as they would a, a rare one. They'll probably still enjoy it. If you serve a rare steak to someone who likes well done, they're not going to be into it. For me though, I I am actually near the point of I like my steaks blue rare almost. Like I when I when I cook my own steak, I will cook it for like a minute on each side. Um yeah. How does it feel to be able to support your how does it feel to be able to be able to help support your kids simply by speculating about a fictional galaxy and its math and mental lore? It feels great. Doing something that you love is phenomenal. Uh Red J, and the thing that I like more than that is the fact that, for one, I'm my own boss, which is a great feeling, um, but also, I just really love the idea of being home. I, I've seen my kids, like, I work when my kids go to bed, uh, generally, so I've seen my kids more in their first one and a half for my daughter and three and a half for my son years of life than many fathers do for a very, very long time. Okay, what is your current live stream schedule? Can we have more? I would love to live stream. It comes down to there being only so many hours in the day. If I live stream, my videos suffer. It's like, I kind of think about it like this. You can choose any two of three things. Main channel videos, some second channel, like gaming or uh, my Xclips channel, or live streaming. You can pick any two. You're, you can either go full in on one, or you can go 75 in on two, I would say. Or even what I end up doing usually is I'll go really hard on the main channel for a while and about 75% on the second channel. Or for a while, I, I was live streaming. Last year, before I, my Clips channel really turned up, I was live streaming a lot. Um, when Squadrons was popular, we were live streaming almost every night, and I was focusing big on the gaming videos. But right now, it's just like I'm being practical. The clips make me a lot of money. Uh, and the time investment is good. Where live streaming, I wasn't really growing very much. Because the live stream, you have to stream like 50 hours a week. And, you know, that's kind of that's not conducive for doing other things. Uh, maybe one or two more. More Star Wars AW with XP Gamers. Yeah, I'd love to do more things with, with XP Gamers for sure. Captain Shack, for those who don't know, is his, is his name. XP Gamers is the channel name. Uh, okay, so this will be the second last one. Informal Geek says, obviously you're a Star Wars fan, but are there any other Lucas I'm, Lucas projects you're a big fan of? Big fan of Indiana Jones. Um, Land Before Time, as a kid, one of my favorites. Uh, I guess he helped found, find uh, create Pixar as well, so I'll, I'll include that. I'm not familiar, I'm not as, you know hugely into some of his other works not that i don't like them um but but yeah indiana jones i love it's got so much heart same it's same sort of adventure as as uh star wars i'm even excited for the fifth one and i didn't even mind the fourth one the fourth one's been memed on a little too hard in my opinion Hmm. Trying to pick one random one to choose. Maybe maybe a lighter one to end with. Well, that's pretty much it. So, uh, no offense. Are you running out of ideas to make content on a day-to-day -day basis? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, I'm not sure what to do, so I'll record a QA. and a um, But it helps if you guys ask questions. I, I do. Like, people think I don't read, I don't read your guys' suggestions. I really do. Every day... Um, I checked the comments on the recent video just to see, like, I've got a, a, a Google Sheets page where I kind of keep my ideas. I've also got a blackboard behind me that I keep my ideas. And, like, usually I'll just draw from one or I'll plan the night before what I'm going to do. But I always check the comments on the recent video because it's like if I can bank an idea and add an extra idea, like, that's very valuable to me. Um, but, yeah. Also... Venom asks, how many beers were consumed once the ranges were eliminated? 
The Rangers are my NHL team, and I was feeling very sad when they were eliminated. But guys, that is all for this Q&A. Let's see how long we went. 50 minutes? My goodness. It's going to be fun to edit this one down and export it. Uh, it's not really going to get any editing, let's be honest. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of you. If you made it this far in the video, I'm going to think of a secret, uh, s what I call a shibboleth. Where it's like a code word that only the in crowd knows. Think of a, a shibboleth or a, a, a signal for each other that you've made it this far. If you've made it this far, I want to hear about... Not something I usually ask. What Star Wars... Hmm. What You can get one droid from Star Wars to hang out with. To, to, you know, help you, whatever, once a week. Which droid you choose. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.